Years ago, Angel Hernandez is scheduled to have home plate for a game. I run into him before the game, and I say, Mr. Hernandez, is it going to be a blue shirt for you tonight? And he stops, looks back, takes a quizzical glance, and says, How do you know that? I say, Angel, you always wear blue when you work the dish. True story. We are in session for the latest round of this lawsuit that uh, Angel has against MLB. Huge, huge document dump. There was a deadline, and Angel Hernandez's team dumped at least 1,000 pages of evidence in the middle of the night when no one noticed. So, of course, we have to look at it. There's a lot to read through, and most of it, a lot of it's redacted, too. Like, entire pages are black. But here's the crux. Angel, as we know, is suing the league for racial discrimination about not getting World Series assignments, not being promoted to crew chief. The evidence and the findings that he has compiled in this most recent document dump appear to show two things. His supervisors recommended that he work the World Series on at least two occasions during the relevant period. That would be starting in 2011 and ending in about 2017. That's number one. And number two, he worked as a crew chief in the backup or acting or interim role pretty much every year during the relevant period. And, and the league office itself admits that he was qualified to work, to be a crew chief during that time. So let's get into the, to the actual data here because it's a doozy. It's pretty darn good evidence to support his claim, but is it discriminatory? That's the question. Just as an overview, there are going to be four deadlines. This was one of the four that are coming up between now and July. And so we can expect a healthy dose of evidence to be deposited every single time. This was Angel's term. MLB's turn will be May 22nd, and we will look for evidence from MLB around that time. Maybe we'll have something to report, and maybe we won't. That's sort of the fun of law. But this is what Angel had in terms of his World Series claim specifically. In 2012, Ed Montague, umpire supervisor, said, I'm recommending Angel to work the 2012 World Series. MLB ignored that. 2015, October 2015. So, this is, it's not like they're recommending it during the season. This is actually after the Division Series, but before the World Series, when they would normally make these selections, they're talking about who they want on the crew. Steve Palermo, umpire supervisor, sends an email to Randy Marsh, saying, Randy, Mar Randy Marsh, the director, saying, I want Angel Hernandez on the World Series. And Randy Marsh isn't the one responding. It's Peter Woodfork, the senior vice president of baseball operations, who... Apparently, via email to director, uh, senior director of umpire ops, Matt McKendry, again, these are not actual former umpires from the field, writing, four new umpires and a guy in the middle of the largest debacle in response to Palermo's list. He's talking about a two-year-old grudge with Angel Hernandez. This is going back to the 2013 season when Oakland's Adam Rosales hit a double but was it a home run in Cleveland, deep left field? They go to the, remember, it's 2013, they go to the old school crew chief monitor in the clubhouse. Angel Hernandez is the crew chief. And he looks at it and he says, I don't have clear and convincing evidence to change this call. I'm sticking with a double. Comes out, ejects Bob Melvin. After the game, MLB acknowledges the call was missed. Angel Hernandez acknowledges, he says, look, the video that I had to operate off of wasn't good enough to help me out. It wasn't clear or convincing. I had to go with the call on the field. MLB acknowledges the call was missed, but will not acknowledge the shortcomings of the technology. But, but, the very next year, those TVs were no longer used. The very next year, everything got brought in-house. Huge upgrade to big, high-definition monitors. But, it's Angel's fault. So just as a little sidebar of that, that's the debacle that Woodfork was talking about, that they don't want to acknowledge if their technology wasn't good enough. But the next year, they upgraded everything. So just take it for what it is. That's just actual factual statements on that, on that part. The opinion is whether the technology was good enough or not. The fact is, the fact of the matter is, they upgraded their entire technologi technology fleet the following year and changed the way that replay works. Sidebar. Now back to the main case. 
Peter Woodfork's deposition is pretty darn good if you're Angel Hernandez, I think. At least that's the way they're framing it, and considering this evidence comes from Angel's team, they probably wouldn't have it any other way. Of course it looks good for him. But Woodfork allegedly said in rejecting Hernandez from the 2015 World Series, it's going to be a no for Rob. That's Rob Manfred, the commissioner of baseball. And, and Riker was apparently in on, the, on this and said, look, if you want to take Angel off, take him off. And Woodfork said, it's going to be no for Rob. And so they asked him under deposition, did Rob Manfred actually tell you that? Did he tell you he didn't want Angel? And Woodfork will not confirm that at all. He'll, he'll, he said, I, I don't remember. And he, the actual quote is, I took a presumption on the situation. So he made a judgment call of his own. It's not like Manfred said anything. He just made a judgment call. And No, Manfred didn't say explicitly, according to the deposition. He didn't explicitly say no. But Woodfork presumed that that might be the case, and he acted on it. Very functional. Next up, we have the crew chief issue. And Angel Hernandez is saying, I've been an interim backup acting something like that crew chief since the relevant period started. Remember, it starts in 2011 when Joe Torre gets to the office. I've been in that role since 2011. Why am I not permanent? Am I not good enough to be a crew chief? That sort of thing. And Woodfork, again, F -star, always has to be a fall guy, and Woodfork's the guy. Or at least he looks like the guy this time. Woodfork in deposition says, you know, he was actually qualified to be crew chief, but I'm going to qualify that by saying that he's qualified to be crew chief only sometimes, but not all the time. I paraphrase. So that's quite interesting. And, and, he, and they acknowledge that the crew chief and the acting or interim or backup crew chief roles during games are very, very similar, if not exactly the same, as well as doing the reports and all of that stuff. So yeah, Angel actually has somewhat of a case there. Speaking of which, part of the reason that we have these four deadlines coming up is that both sides ask for summary judgment. They want to move this thing along a little bit. But Angel sort of, not exactly backtrack on that, but he's sort of, I'm going to take a detour and I'm going to ask you not just summary judgment necessarily on the whole case, but actually this little limited opinion. Could I please get a, a, limited, a limited order or opinion or judgment from the court that states that I actually have a prima facie case, which would entitle him to the whole going forward, maybe a jury. So maybe Angel saw the evidence and said, you know what, my case is actually not that bad, so I, I might want to double down and go for the jury. Or at least try to put more heat on MLB for a settlement, because it doesn't look good for them. Now, MLB gets a chance to respond to this in May, so they could completely turn it around and make Angel not look good. They'll try. They've already tried. They've tried to discredit Angel Hernandez by pointing to a fine that he once got in 2012 or 13 or something like that for trying to get a baseball for a fellow umpire in, in reference to Homer Bailey's no-hitter. And no-hitters were, were 2012 was Hickox, 2013 was Adrian Johnson. But he supposedly got a fine because he tried to get that, that ball or a similar ball. And they're talking about Randy Marsh's deposition where he, he's talking about, yeah, there was a suspension three days. I was suspended three days for a similar offense. You know, when, when you have nothing else, you attack the witness's credibility. That's what you do to try to discredit the entire testimony to attack their credibility. And he's like, oh, oh yeah, Richie, Richie Garcia got uh, fired in 2010 for, for going to see Vic Carapazza work because they're related, son-in-law. And he was told not to, and he did it anyway, so he got fired. And it's like, how is this relevant for this case? We're talking about Montague and Palermo recommending Angel Hernandez for the World Series. We are not talking about anyone. Why are you doing this? So, again, these things get really messy where they try to just paint and smear everyone that they possibly can who is in any way connected to Angel Hernandez. Because why is Garcia's name even being mentioned? Because Angel Hernandez had the audacity to say that the last minority crew chief during the relevant period of, of the lawsuit, again, because again, lawsuit's 2017, the last minority crew chief, Rich Garcia. So, of course, now he's involved. It's a mess. And, again, 
The relevant period, I just want to really quickly reiterate, the relevant period of this lawsuit stops before Herman Danley and Alfonso Marquez are hired or promoted to crew chief prior to the 2020 season. Speaking of which, one of the gems from this deposition was that Peter Woodfork was asked about how they choose crew chiefs and World Series umpires. And I think we talked about this previously. He mentioned, I don't really look at the evaluations. We don't have the evaluations in front of us when we do this, Tori and, and, and the entire group. It's more about focusing on leadership qualities and other intangible things that you can't find in an evaluation. In the deposition, they also, they also asked him about minority umpiring percentages, percentage of minority umpires and are you satisfied with that number? And the answer is really interesting for a guy who says he doesn't pay attention when deciding who to promote and who to assign. And he says he doesn't pay attention to actual analytic paperwork. His answer was really interesting about the minority crew chief per, or minority umpire percentage. It's not satisfaction. For me, 15, that's not how I, I'm more analytic. I look 16 at that number. It's not for me. It was not high 17 enough, and it's something we need to improve on. So it's a good sentence. And the key part of that sentence is I'm more analytic. It's that's not how I, I'm more analytic. Okay. If you're more analytic, Angel's team will clearly argue. If you are admitting that you are more analytic, why do you not use any of the analytics when you're deciding who to assign to the world series or promote to crew chief? That's probably where their case is trying to hinge on. They're trying to get that to say, that policy disproportionately affects minority umpires like my client. Therefore, please find in our favor or at least let this case go forward to a jury. Or if you're going to settle, your settlement has to add a bunch of zeros because it doesn't look good for you anymore. Just wanted to bring you up to speed with the latest that was going on in this case. Visit us online at CloseCallSports.com, Twitter and Facebook at Umpire Ejections. We'll have more on this as more breaks. But for now... Angel dumped a bunch of documents on the court, and that's just that's a lot of paperwork to read through, and it some of it is, is looks real good for his side. We'll see how MLB responds in May, in late May. We'll see you then. Take care.